talking about exponents. Um, and before we kind of start talking about exponents, let's just figure or, or think about where exponents are important in real life. Um, the first example that often comes up is asking a question on uh, how many times can you fold a piece of paper in half? And, um, you know, this is not a life, uh, life or death situation, but it's a fun kind of activity and you can try it. You can think about it, first of all, um, and, and uh, maybe pause this video. But if you've done this with me in class, you'll realize that uh, you can't really do it that often. Every time you fold it, you lose a half of the paper and it gets much thicker. You can actually do it less than 10 times. I think usually it's seven at most, eight if you're lucky. Uh, and it really doesn't matter what kind of paper you have. I mean, you can try, you can try using toilet paper, you can try using paper towels, you can try using thin paper, thick paper, large paper, small paper, try it, try different things. But uh, I bet that you will not be able to do it more than 10 times the folding. Another super typical question that comes, with, uh, comes up with exponents is, uh, which would you pick? Would you rather get a million dollars up front or can I give you a penny today and then double it every single day? And most people would say, well, forget the penny, I'll take a dollar, or I'm sorry, not a dollar, a million dollars. Um, but if you start to kind of track your growth of the penny, you'll realize that you go from one penny to two to four, uh, rather slowly, or it seems like it's not really growing, 16 cents by day five. However, if you go up to a week uh, one or maybe 10th day, you will learn that your money starts to really skyrocket. And once it does, it actually doesn't look back. It starts to grow, and after 28 days, you actually end up with more than a million dollars. Another super important example is growth of viruses, coronavirus being um, the most recent example in the, I guess, entire world. And it really um, uh, shows the, the extent of exponential growth in that it took two months for the cases to go from 20 to 40 million. This is in year 2020, uh, but then just one month to go from 80 to 100. So uh, kind of the exponential growth um, is really exemplified by this slow upward uh, trend that eventually really takes off. And once it takes off, it's kind of hard to, um, to, to make it slow down. So let's go ahead and look at the exponent rules. You should know most of these rules, the first three for sure. If I'm multiplying the basis exponents add, if I'm dividing the basis exponents subtract, and if I have a power on top of a power or exponent on top of an exponent, they will multiply. So if I have something like 4n to the exponent seven, and all of this in a bracket to the exponent three, this would really end up being um, the, the, the exponent three would apply to the um, n to the exponent 7, and it would also apply to the 4. So it applies to everything inside the parentheses. So we would end up with 4 to the exponent 3, and then n to the exponent 21. We would multiply those. And that's our rule number 3. All right? Uh, other rules, man, there's a lot of them. Um, when you're adding within parentheses, that is not allowed. No exponent rule there. You just leave things as they are. You actually cannot distribute that exponent. So really important rule. Uh, and then of course the rule number four, whatever it is in parentheses must be multiplied together. And then that exponent can apply to both of the, or everything that's within the parentheses. Um, I was probably your age, grade nine, 10 or 11, when I learned that addition kind of sucks in math. There's so many rules that you cannot use because of that addition. So uh, I think by grade 11, I said multiplication is the way to go. I love it. Addition just sucks, okay? Rule number five, if you have division of your bases and parentheses around it with some exponent, that exponent applies to both numerator and a denominator. Rule number six, b to the exponent zero or anything to the exponent zero is one, as long as that anything is not zero because zero to the exponent zero is undefined. Negative exponents, I talked about it in another lesson. Something to a negative exponent can really be reciprocated and the exponent can be made positive by flipping it from a numerator to the denominator. You're fl really flipping the base and the exponent um, and the exponent changes sign. Now it is important to note that for this rule number seven, if I have four n to the exponent negative three, the four does not have a negative exponent. So the four is gonna stay where it is. And then the n and the exponent negative three, that will make its way into the denominator and become a positive um, exponent, all right? Um, also, if I had something like um, like 
4 to the uh, n and all of that to the exponent negative 3. Well, now, now this changes because now 4 is part of this negative exponent. So everything will travel downstairs or to the denominator and become a 3. So that's that. Um, exponent rules, rational exponents. We talked about this in class and I gave you some examples. Um, but it's really essentially saying that if I have nth root, um, whatever the root is, we can actually make that into a base with an exponent by saying, well, that is um, the exponent becomes 1 over n, whatever that nth root is. So that's a rule. That is really the rule, and that rule can be extended by adding um, an exponent to a radical, and that exponent will really just take place of the 1, the, of, the, of the exponent. So the instead of having 1 over n, it becomes m over n. So if I have something like cubic root of x squared, that can really be written as x to the exponent 2 over 3, okay? So you have to be able to go from, uh, from one to the other, one form to the other, because the exponential form here, uh, you can imagine that it's useful when you're doing calculations, because we can now use all those exponent laws to figure things out or simplify it. Uh, if I'm multiplying radicals, I can actually put them together as a single radical as long as they're under the same nth root. And similarly, I can go backwards, right? If I have them together under a radical sign, I can split them. Now, the unfortunate reality is, uh, I guess, uh, again, if you had addition, so if I had a plus b under a radical sign, do you think I can split that into square root of a plus square root of b? I hope that you remember what I said on the last slide. No, you cannot. Um, if you're adding under a radical sign, you cannot split it. So you cannot, no way, this is, does not work. So again, multiplication is so much cooler uh, than, um, than addition and subtraction. Like radicals, so things underneath a square root or nth root can be added as long as they're the same. The radical has to be the same. Um, and here we can really just treat them as like terms. That's the way I think about it. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do some problems here. So in the first one, we can really distribute the 4 into both of those um, bases because they are being multiplied. So the numerator becomes x to the exponent 2 times 4, which is 8, and then y to the exponent. There is a 1 here. We don't really see it. We don't write it, but it's understood to be there. So it's 1 times 4, which is 4 over x. Again, same thing in the denominator. The exponent uh, multiplies in with the existing exponents, which are both 1. And then I can use the um, exponent law that uh, asks me to subtract the exponents because I'm dividing the bases, and that becomes x to the exponent 6, and y to the exponent 4 take away 2, which is 2. In the second example, I'm actually going to work on the numerator parentheses first, and because the x's are being multiplied, I can simply add the exponents, so it becomes x to the exponent 8, 3 plus 5, and all of that is to the exponent 2. I'll just rewrite that, x to the exponent 9 here. In the numerator, the two exponents will multiply now because I've got an exponent on top of an exponent, and then I have 9 in the denominator as my exponent, and now I can subtract 16 take away 9 is 7. Well, that's it. That's the final answer. In the second example, I'm going to distribute the exponent to each, um, each exponent within the parentheses, and everything here is being multiplied. There's no addition sign anywhere, so I'm just going to really write it um, in sequence and understanding that, hey, there's a multiplication in between each one of these. Uh, so I'm just multiplying each one of the exponents, n to the exponent 6, and then p to the exponent 15. And the only other thing that I can do here is I can collect. So m and m here, and they're being multiplied. What happens when you're multiplying the bases? Exponents add. 12 plus 9 is 21. And um, I can put that in a bracket, too, even here. You can put things in a bracket, if you wish. The n's, they can also go together, n and n, uh, 8 plus 6 is 14, and then p, unfortunately, is it's uh, on its own. That's our final answer. Square root of 40. So now we can use that splitting up of things inside of a radical sign. 40 can really be 4 times 10, which really means I can write it as square root of 4 times square root of 10. And this to you may seem... Um, may seem kind of redundant, but it's not because square root of 4 can really be 2. That's a friendly number, 2 root 10. So you got to kind of be uh, strategic in what do you want to split here because if I did 8 and 5, um, well, that wouldn't work because 8 and 5, uh, even though they both multiply to 40, uh, and 4 times 10 is 40, 8 times 5 or 8 and 5 are not perfect squares. For E, 
uh, we've got division, so I can really just say this is square root of 5 and this is square root of 16, right? I can apply the square root to each numerator and a denominator separately. And here, square root of 5, um, nothing can be done there. But square root of 16, well, that's just 4. So isn't that awesome? That looks much cleaner. I like that. Uh, square root of 20, I'm just going to write that as its own thing. And then square root of x to the exponent 16. So let's see here, square root of 20, how should I split it? Should I do 2 and 10? 4 and 5, yeah, I think that's better. 4 times 5 is much better. x to the exponent 16 can also um, be written with an exponent, so 16 over 2, because this is a square root. So I can really just write it in an exponent form. In the numerator, I've got square root of 4 and square root of 5. In the denominator, look at that, 16 divided by 2, well, that's just 8. Square root of 4 is really just 2, so I have 2 root 5 in the numerator over square x to the exponent 8. And this here is my final answer, not much more to do. And again, it's cleaner than what I was given at the beginning. Moving on and doing some more exponent things. And here it just says, okay, well, number 81 is here, but write it with a base 4. How would I do that? Well, that can really be written as 3 to the exponent 4. The second one is 9 to the exponent 5, but you still want it with a base 3. Well, 9 can be written as base 3, and that's really 3 to the exponent 2. And then, of course, there was already existing exponent 5. Can't really forget that. And then the um, exponents here would just multiply. C is a little bit trickier, so I have to convert it to the exponent form first. So square root of 9, well, um, I mean, square root of 9 is really just 3. And then 7th root of 27 to the exponent 5, that can really be written as 27 to the exponent 5 over 7. Now, we're not done yet, because now this 27, can I write that as a base 3? Remember, the question wants base 3. And it can. 27 is really 3 to the exponent 3. Can't forget the other exponent, 5 over 7, so I'm going to rewrite it. And now these exponents will multiply, right? Because that's the rule. Multiply the exponents. And what happens when I multiply 3 times 5 over 7? I'll do it on the side here. 3 is really 3 times 1. Th I mean, 3 over 1 times 5 over 7. And that's really just 3 times 5, which is 15 over 7. That's what happens when you multiply, uh, multiply numbers, right? Fractions. So um, that will become uh, 15 over 7. And then the 3 um, for the first term is really just 3 to the exponent 1. And then you're going to add those exponents, right? 1 plus 15 over 7. And then 1 uh, can be, it become 7 over 7. So the answer becomes 3 to the exponent 22 over 7. This 1 here can be really written as 1 over 1. And then if you want to find common um, uh, denominator, you'll multiply both by 7, and that's how we get 22 over 7 after we do the 